and we will not stand over this ongoing assault and brutal killing and dehumanising of a captive civilian population. But despite this, despite this, what has our government done? And indeed, what have the governments internationally done? Shame. Nothing! Shame. The death toll in Gaza has reached almost 1,700. That is over the amount of people killed during Operation Cast Lead in 2008-2009. And when we marched on the streets then, when we lobbied the government, we said never again, not in our name. What has our government done? It has abstained from the nothing. vote. It has done nothing. It has not called for sanctions. So while our government refuses to act, we must act. And you all coming out here showing your solidarity and people all over the country doing so is one way of showing your solidarity, of forcing them to act. We've seen boycott actions take place across the country. We've seen people go into supermarkets, deshell Israeli stock and bring it up to the manager saying, I will not shop here while you support the apartheid and ethnic cleansing. and say yes. Now there's only a few just yet, but we hope that next week, if we're still here, there will be a lot more to add to that list. Just this week, the Yard florist in Clonturf have come out and said they will be the first florist in Ireland to have an anti-apartheid policy and they will not stock Israeli flowers. The second business that we have to mention is the Exchequer Bar and Restaurant on Exchequer Street. They made a huge statement this week. recommend you all go for a drink there after <laughs> We want to add to that list. We've got Connolly Books who've been a long-standing supporter of the boycott. We have numerous other businesses around Ireland who have supported the boycott. We need more. We need businesses to make a stand, come out and show their solidarity with the people of Palestine. <laughs> now last week and the week before when I spoke to you I talked about how the media was continuously framing this conflict in the, the rhetoric of the oppressor. To try to deal with that, the IPSC, myself and some of my colleagues, we wrote a briefing document for the press. It seems to have been well received. We can't say that the framing has changed because of it, but we have to keep chipping away. Continue to write to your media outlets. Say, we need the facts here. We do not need you to continue to reiterate the rhetoric of the oppressor. But this week, early this week, we said this is not enough. Our government have let us down. We need to do more. So the IPSC wrote a briefing document for government. This is an extensive document. It's about 16 pages long, it's thorough, and it's based entirely on the principles of human rights and international law. It was sent to every senator before the Senate was reconvened last Thursday, and has been positively received. On Tuesday, every politician in this country will get a copy of that briefing document, and we expect them to take action. I've said this before, we need, it. we need all angles covered here. We need grassroots activism, we need media monitor, we need political lobbying, we need direct action, we need people power on the streets. This has to be a multifaceted campaign until we get our government and the EU to make a stand on this and call for Israel to be sanctioned. We said we'll make it simple for you. We outlined four recommendations, only four recommendations. The first one, sanction Israel under the terms of the Euromed Agreement. Right. Right. Israel should not be afforded preferential trade with the European Union while it continues to occupy, persecute, oppress and kill Palestinian people. Secondly, to support the international call for an arms 
embargo against Israel. While this goes on, no state should trade, buy or sell arms from or to Israel. This has to end. Thirdly, you forget how many fingers I have. Thirdly, we called for a ban on the importation of Israeli goods into this country. Yeah. 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 and tell them you support the call for boycott. We want them to place a ban, like they did in 1986, on South African goods, place a ban on goods from apartheid regimes. So place a ban on Israeli goods coming into this country. And lastly, and this is one I think a lot of people here will support because we've heard chants of it all the way through the city. We said there is a huge appetite for this in the country. We want you to support the call to send the Israeli ambassador home. Expel the Israeli ambassador. So all of those people all around the country have been doing brilliant actions, boycott actions, demonstrations, die-ins, sit-ins, etc. We want them all here on the streets in our thousands. Now today we're going to have less speakers but we've got some really strong speakers and we're going to do two live link-ups with Gaza again. So before I hand you over to our next speaker, I'd just like to let you know we're going to try to go live to Al Shifa Hospital. As you know, many of the hospitals in Gaza have been bombed. All of the hospitals are short medical supplies. They're all stretched to absolute capacity and beyond. We are going to try to go live to, the, to one of those hospitals and speak to one of the doctors there on the ground. But before we do that, I want to hand you over to an absolute legend who has been working so hard for Palestinian people in this country and for Palestinian cause internationally for most of his life. Mr. Martin Quigley, the chairperson of IPSC. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now! There's no people in the world that needs justice more than the Palestinian people. They have, since 1947, December 1947, they have been subject to an, an ethnic cleansing and in, which went on into 1948. 750,000 Palestinians were ethnically cleansed from the, from the historic state of Palestine. They were driven out of their homes and their homes were demolished when they left. People tried to get back and the people who tried to get back, 49, 50, 51, 52, were shot down, men, women and children. But the ethnic cleansing didn't stop there. The ethnic cleansing has continued year after year after year. The ethnic clen cleansing was expanded in 1967. Another 350,000 people were dispossessed and driven out of their homes. Since then, Palestinians have been driven off their land in the West Bank and in Gaza, southern Israel. Palestinians within Israel are being driven off their land. And the ethnic cleansing continues. And this is 
This is the shame that the world bears for standing by and watching, watching for 65 years, Palestinians being ethnically cleansed, being killed and with no rights. And what did the European Union do? What did the European states do? What did the United States do? Supported Israel, armed them, armed them, protected them, protected them in the United Nations, protected them in the media. And this is what we have to stop. This can't go on. What we are witnessing in Gaza today is another act in the destruction of the Palestinian people. Make no mistake, this is all part of the Israel project that started in 1947. As soon as the unity government agreement was signed by the PA in the West Bank and Hamas in Gaza, the plans were made to destroy Gaza and to destroy any resistance. And this is the plan that Israel will take the West Bank. They have time, there's no one stopping them. They'll take it slowly, year by year, day by day. Palestinian houses will be demolished. Palestinian land will be taken. taken and they crush whatever resistance exists in Gaza. And our government, our government, on a motion, a resolution in the Human Rights Council come, that said Israel may be committing war crimes. Abstain, because may be committing war crimes. Does anyone here believe that Israel is not committing war crimes every day of the week? Bombing children on a beach, targeting children is a war crime. Artillery shells into the UN school where refugees, 3,000 refugees are sheltering is a war crime. Murder. Shelling hospitals is a war crime. Targeting ambulances is a war crime. When Palestinians went into Suja to try and find their relatives, they were met by Israeli snipers. The same thing happened in Kuza. Unarmed civilians trying to find their families were shot down in cold blood and their bodies are still lying in the streets. These are war crimes. Charlie Flanagan, these are war crimes. What's wrong with you? What planet are you on? Ireland, Ireland voted with the European Union bloc, abstained with the U U European Union bloc and the Human Rights Council. The European Union has been, countries, Germany and France have been arming Israel for many, many years, have been providing the warships and the ammunition and the guns that are killing Palestinians and have no problems with it, have no problems supporting this, this ethnic cleansing and this destruction, this genocide of the Palestinian people. The thing is, and I, this morning I was on to a doctor in Al Shifa Hospital, and it's very difficult speaking to people in Gaza because what can you say? What can we do? What, what are we doing? What can we do to make it stop? Because that's what they want to know. What can we do to make it stop? And we must, we must take action. It's not good enough that Barack Obama, that they condemn the Israeli shelling of a school. And they are rushing, are rushing to supply the same weapons, the same arms, yeah. the same artillery shells that are killing Palestinians. This is, this is unbelievable hypocrisy. This is unreal. This is hypocrisy of the worst kind. We have, as individuals, as citizens, we have to take action ourselves. And I'd like, I'd like people to give a cheer for the people in Kinvara and the people the people in the Exeter Bar who come out the people in Kinvara have come out and said there will be no Israeli produce sold in Kinvara until there's justice for Palestine the manager of the Exeter Bar has said the same thing there will be no Israeli produce used in the Exeter Bar until there's justice for Palestine. The, 
what we must do as individuals. We can do it through local groups or community groups or trade unions or political parties, local councils. I'm, I'm proud to be in Dublin because Dublin City Council passed a motion calling for an embargo on the Israeli state. And good on you, Dublin City Council. ourselves if our government don't act, act. We have to act. We have to push them into it. It happened here in 1984 when people stood outside on stores on a picket and forced the government to ban South African produce which happened in 1985. And it can be done again and it will be done again. And you can do it. You can do it as individuals. You can do it as groups. You can do it as trade unions. What I want to say to people, we have, and on our far right, there's a stall, we have boycott leaflets, it'll tell you what leaflets or what Israeli goods to boycott, there's a good list, and if you're going to a supermarket, and you can do what I intend to do, uh, is go to the supermarket, get a trolley or a basket, depends on what's there, get a trolley, go and load it up, if it's Israeli potatoes, bring it to the checkout, ask for the manager and say you shouldn't be selling these products. These products are funding Israeli terrorism. You can do something, you can do something very simple. You can just print it out this off this morning. Uh, there's four here, there's 50 here, but you can print it off yourself. Now if this is not illegal, you can stay cool, be calm. You're just making a point. You, you're not to stop products that fund this terrorism, that's funding massacres in Gaza, and stop, stop stalking Israeli produce until there's justice for Palestine. Yeah, yeah. And it's a simple thing that you can do. Now, on our farm, there's a stall. We have memberships, we have these boycott leaflets. We have a contact list if you want to get involved. There are other groups involved in this, and there'll be political parties, and, and the Irish anti-war movement, Gaza Action Ireland. So I urge people to stay involved, to stay, to stay engaged with this, because we have to stop this slaughter. We have to give the people of Palestine some hope for the future. Even if our governments don't, we have to say no more. This will not happen anymore. I, I just want to, just, just to finish up, I just want to read you something that was written in an email in 2003 from Rafa, from a young woman who stood in front of an Israeli bulldozer, an Israeli D9 bulldozer. When the Israelis were demolishing 12,000 houses, they wanted to demolish, they demolished in Gaza in 2003. Another ethnic cleansing, and her name was Rachel Corey. And she wrote this email, she wrote this email home, and I'm just going to end with her words. And this was Rafa, and 80 people were killed yesterday in Rafa. And I'll just say one thing actually, because I watched the, I don't know if everyone has this experience. I watched Newsnight last night on BBC Two, and there was 20 minutes discussion about one Israeli soldier that was kidnapped. Not one word! About the 80 people who were murdered in Rafa. Not one word. Shame, shame. Rich, Richard Corey writing from Rafa her email home to her parents in 2003. It was written on the uh, in in March and uh, no, sorry, the 27th of February. And Richard Corey died in uh, in Rafa. Crushed by an Israeli D9 bulldozer, surprised to the Israeli army by the US military. And her words are these All of the situations that I have tried to enumerate above, and a lot of other things, constitute a somewhat gradual, often hidden, but nevertheless massive, removal and destruction of the ability of a particular group of people to survive. This is what I am seeing here. The assassinations, rocket attacks, and shooting at children are atrocities. Putting and focusing on them, I'm terrified of missing, of missing their context.
The vast majority of people here, even if they had the economic means to escape, even if they actually wanted to give up resisting on their land and just leave, which appears to be maybe the least nefarious of Sharon's possible goals, can't leave, because they can't even get into Israel to apply for visas, and because their destination countries won't let them in, both our country and Arab countries. So I think with all means their survival is cut off in a pen which is Gaza, which people can't get out of, I think that qualifies as genocide. Even if they couldn't get out, I think it still would qualify as genocide. That was Rachel Corrie writing from Rafa in 2003. She was murdered, crushed by an Israeli bulldozer on the 16th of March, 2003. I just want to mention one last thing. Niall Farrell is in prison in Limerick. Shannon Watcher trying to see what's going through Shannon Airport. We don't know if there are American munitions going to supply Israel going to Shannon Airport. So ask your TD, ask your local council. We must stop Shannon being used by US military. Thank you. But our live link up with Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza is down. And that itself is indicative of the situation in Gaza. If the phone line in the hospital won't even work, what does that say for medical equipment? What does that say for everything else? We're going to continue to try. We're going to continue to try to link up with them. But in the meantime, I'd like to introduce a good friend of mine for the last few years. A man who grew up in Ireland and has a bit of a trim accent, but is Palestinian himself and a man who's been out here every week on the streets doing wonderful action and uh, just, just being brilliant like so many of you have been. Mr. Salah Rafifi. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Cool. Because uh, it seems that there's some people really near us who, don't, who are not listening. They refuse to listen to us. They refuse to listen to the voice of reason. They refuse to listen to civil society. I'm talking about these guys here behind us. They're refusing to listen. Why is that happening? Why are they not listening to the Irish people? I, I wrote down a couple of things because I knew I'd get emotional, so I don't, I don't want to uh, skip these. So sorry that I have notes. But, um, <clears throat> so people like Charlie Flanagan, Department of Foreign Affairs, they refuse to listen to us. Shame on them. Shame! Shame! They refuse to listen now to the global outcry of, to stop slaughtering innocent people. Stop the insanity. They can't help with this. For the sake of humanity, will you please help stop the madness? Boaz <laughs> Modai, the so-called ambassador for his country, the Irish, the Israeli ambassador to Ireland, Boaz Modai, which is a shameful, a shameful name, Baz, an ambassador. He, he's not a, he does not represent all the voices within Israel, okay? He represents a fascist and power-hungry regime. People like Boaz Modai are so blocked by their hate and their anger that their receptors to humanity have stopped working. But Boaz Modai, let me tell you this, okay? I'm here as a Palestinian. I'm here as an Irish person. I'm here as a human. We are human, Boaz. Me and you and all of the people here standing in solidarity. We are human. I'm here to represent love. I'm here to stand up for the dignity, justice, and decent life that Palestinians deserve. Boaz Modai, I'm here again today to shout and scream and to drown out your hate. All of us are here to drown out your hate. I'm here to represent those voices of solidarity in Israel that your government is trying to stamp out. The thousands in Tel Aviv that are standing up against your hate. They are also standing up to drown out your hate. Mr. Ambassador of Israel, Boaz Modai, I invite you to either stand on the right side of justice or leave this country. As activists, as people standing up for 
justice and human rights as Palestinians, we have to remember to love. We have to remember to laugh. And I know this seems ridiculous to speak of now as families are being wiped out off this planet in Gaza. But this is what Boaz Modai and his fellow fascists are trying to do. They're trying to kill our spirit, to kill our voice, to kill our hope. They're trying to wipe us out. Shame on them. So we need to shout even louder. We need to be even more visible to step up our campaigns. Boycott, divestment, sanctions. That's all they don't understand. They don't understand political speak. We need to eliminate them through economics. That's how it's going to happen. I'd like to end with a quote, and unfortunately it's as relevant now as it was when Bobby Sands said it. To Boaz Modai and the Israel he represents, as a Palestinian, I say to you, our revenge will be the laughter of our children. We will not give up. Long live Palestine! Okay, we're in luck. We are going to go live to Gaza now. Unfortunately, we can't get through to Al Shifa Hospital, but we have a journalist called Ashaf Shannon in Gaza who's going to speak to us live now and give us an update on the situation. Are we ready? Yeah. 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 Well, the situation in Gaza is disaster. It's, it's, it's nothing but a uh, war zone devastated by non-stop Israeli attacks, Israeli warplanes, Israeli tanks, Israeli gunboats are pounding the Gaza Strip almost on a minute-by-minute minute basis, uh, millions of kilograms of explosives were dumped on the people of Gaza. 1.8 million people live here, and nearly 60% of them are children under the age of 18. It seems that the target of the Israeli operation, so-called Operation Protective Age, is nothing but the annihilation of the Palestinians in Gaza. This is a continuation of Israel's genocidal regime against the indigenous people of Palestine. The situation at Gaza Hospital is, is beyond description. It's unbelievable. Hospitals in Gaza do not have medicines, even things like it. Simple things like antibiotics are nowhere to be found. Uh, hospital track, uh, hosp uh, medical equipment, hospital disposable, surgical supplies, I've seen doctors operating on flashlights just to try to save the lives of the thousands of people who were injured by the Israeli, Israeli weaponry, the Israeli, uh, the Israeli ex explosives that have been dumped on the people here. For, two, for almost for 24 hours a day, there is no electricity in Gaza. Uh, all the electricity available in Gaza is through electrical backup generators and they will uh, run out at any, any time now because of, of lack of fuel to operate them. Israel well blew up Gaza's sole power generating plant 85 days ago and people in Gaza don't have any type of electricity. People cannot uh, light their houses with electricity. People cannot run the refrigerators. Even at hospitals, there's no space for the dead. They, they, they're using uh, refrigerators that are used to refrigerate ice cream to store the bodies of, 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 the, of the victims of, of Israeli war on Gaza. Israel has been blocking the, the access to Gaza for eight years. For eight years, it's been blocking uh, has prevented the people of Gaza from having a decent life. At the same time, fishing, there is no fishing, there is no farming, there is nothing. Israel is killing off the people of Gaza. Not only that, according to doctors, international doctors working here, the Israeli military has been using uh, uh, internationally banned weapons uh, against the people of Gaza, including uh, this inert metal explosives, the time explosives, and they also using uh, uh, rockets that could, and, and uh, weaponry that contains uh, depleted uranium, and this is proven by, by doctors and experts who uh, tested uh, the material. Now, it's not only killing the people in Gaza, they're, they're killing the environment by dumping uh, millions of kilograms of explosives. And on the long run, they're devastating the, 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 the soil in Gaza, they're devastating the water reservoir, they're, they're devastating everything in Gaza. Shame on them.
Thank you. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Gaza. Free, free Gaza. What do we want? Just us. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Gaza. Free, free Gaza. Boycott Israel. Boycott Israel. Boycott Israel. Boycott Israel. Okay, I think. I think that chef has heard us and is going to come back on just to say another few words. Are we ready? Could you hear us? <laughs> yes, good, yes. There are thousands of people in Dublin shouting and showing their solidarity with you and the people of Gaza. Okay, at this point, I'm going to hand you over to another speaker and someone who's been to Gaza, I think, on a couple of occasions. Someone who's renowned when he was an MEP for not being afraid to take a strong stance. And someone who doesn't really need any introduction, Mr. Paul Murphy. Thanks a lot, Frida. If there's one thing that changes almost as often as the horrifying death toll in Gaza, it's the pretext that Israel uses for its onslaught. And so we know what it's about. It's about punishing the Palestinian people yet again. It's about undermining the reconciliation agreement. And it's about mowing the lawn of Hamas. But to start with the reason, it was the kidnapping and the tragic killing of the Israeli teenagers which they attempted to blame on Hamas. Then it became about the destruction of the tunnels in Gaza. Then it became about the unilateral demand for disarmament of Gaza. And now, mark my words, in the coming days, what this war is going to be supposedly about is the abduction, the possible abduction, of an Israeli soldier by Hamas. So Obama, the international community, they joined in the chorus of condemnation days after sending more ammunition to kill Palestinian children. Obama described this action, this possible abduction, as barbaric. The, these are the same people that use the screwed up logic of balance in a one-sided conflict and can call this action barbaric. Let's measure the balance. The balance of a soldier captured in war, in enemy territory, engaged in incursion. Let's balance that against the thousands of Palestinians who are taken from their homes in the West Bank or in Gaza for nothing other than being Palestinian. The 5,000 Palestinians, political prisoners currently in jail in Israel, the 200 children, many of whom face torture, the young woman who I met when I was in Gaza three years ago, a woman called Jamalia who was 12 years old. Her father was abducted by the IDF when she was four months old and she hadn't seen him since. Then her successive guardians, her mother, her uncle and her grandfather were murdered by the Israeli forces. There's the barbarity in this conflict. The barbarity in this conflict is in the conscious targeting of shelters, of schools, of hospitals, of refugee camps. The barbarity in this conflict is in the killing of peaceful protesters in the West Bank. The barbarity in this conflict is on the banning of a Palestinian, the suspension of a Palestinian MP from supposedly 
that most the democratic states within the Middle East for daring to question the dominant narrative around the abduction of the teenagers in Israel. The barbarity is in the attacks on the anti-war protesters, Arabs and Jews alike, in Tel Aviv, across Israel, who are attempting to stand up to their regime. 99 years ago, James Connolly wrote about war and barbarism. What he said was that war is a relic of barbarism only possible because we are governed by a ruling class with barbaric ideas. The working class of all countries cannot hope to escape the horrors of war until in all countries that barbaric ruling class is thrown from power. There is nowhere in the world that that statement holds more true than in Israel to do there ca today. There can be no lasting peace without justice, without an end to the blockade, without an end to the oppression, an end to the discrimination, an end to the occupation of Palestine and the establishment of a viable Palestinian state. Yeah. Yeah. There can be no justice, unfortunately, brokered by the forces of imperialism who arm and fund the Israeli state. There can be no justice, unfortunately, brokered by the counter-revolutionary government of al-Sisi in Egypt, who is the second jailer of the people of Gaza and is playing a disgusting role. <laughs> Justice and peace means the overthrow, as Connolly said, of the Israeli ruling class and all those corrupt regimes which collaborate with it in the region. The huge protests in the West Bank they point to what is possible. The possible development of a third intifada, a mass uprising across the occupied territories within Israel itself. The idea of the tactics of the first intifada coming back on the agenda. Mass protests, mass strikes, mass marches onto checkpoints to fundamentally challenge the Israeli establishment that in turn could spread across the region to finish the tasks of the Arab Spring, to kick out the corrupt regimes who collaborate with Israel, to fight for real democratic and socialist change right across the region and to appeal to Jewish workers and poor who cannot be provided with peace or security or decent living standards by their so-called own ruling class. Just to finish, what can we do? We need to keep mobilizing. We need to make sure that there is more than ever on the streets next Saturday. It does make a difference. It shames our own government and their support for the Israeli oppression and the Israeli onslaught. And finally, I think that as long as the people of Gaza are under siege, that the Israeli embassy should be put under siege. The Irish state... The Irish state pays one million euros a year of our taxpayers' money to allow them a home to put out racist propaganda. If the Irish government will not do the decent thing and expel the ambassador, then he should be driven out with protests of tens of thousands of people. Thank you. Okay, we have two more speakers, and I would like to thank you all for staying out here in the rain as well. We have two more really.